but challenge of the Yukon. One king, one new husky. The Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes a trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserve law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his Wonder Dog King met that challenge. And justice rule triumphant. The howling wind seemed to resent the defiance of Sergeant Preston and those with him, who made their slow way through the blinding blizzard toward Hutchins' trading post. The Mountie was taking in the killer, Jules Bazaar. Joe Grant, the fur trapper, and his daughter Marie had insisted on going with Preston. In the fury of the Yukon storm, with early darkness closing in, they regretted their decision. Big rock up ahead. See it? Is it? Is it a landmark? Get behind that rock. Hicking. <laughs> Don't go on, eh, fella? <laughs> Even this much shelter is a relief. This will give us a chance to catch our breath. Sergeant, are you sure we're going in the right direction? King won't lead us astray, Marie. Yeah. He'll get more confidence in that dog than I have. This are? Come here. Now what is the matter, Mr. Law? You're going to tie this rope around your waist. <laughs> you fear Big Jules escape, huh? You'll not escape. There. Here, Grant. Tie this rope around your waist. Yeah. I shouldn't have insisted on coming with you. Now let me tie it around your waist. Maury? There you are. Father was so anxious to get to the post before we got snowed in. Why are you tying us together like this, Preston? We've got to go along the rim of Long Fall Canyon. It'd be safer if we're tied together like mountain climbers. We'll go in a single file about ten feet apart. Ready, Grant? Yes, I guess so. I am in no hurry. I didn't ask you. Come on. On your way, King. Darkness closed in as King led the way along the rim of Long Fall Canyon. King led the way with unerring instinct, but that instinct didn't give warning of the danger. The canyon's overhanging rim, weakened by the battering of storms through countless years, was burdened by deep snow. It couldn't support the weight of those who made their way toward the trading boat. There was a sickening lunge. Get back! <laughs> This deep snow saved us. How about you, Grant? Well, I think I'm all in one piece, but what happened? The edge of the canyon broke away. Good Lord! You don't mean to say that we fell less than 30 feet, Grant. I'll see about this eye. We're on a ledge. Yes, about 15 feet wide. You better stay close to the wall, Mother. Your dog didn't fall. He's up at the top. Quiet, King. He's looking down at us. Keep back. Close to the wall. You hurt, Bissar? Me? Big Jules? No. I am not hurt. Come over here. Get close to the wall. Yeah. Smart Mr. Law with his rope. Yeah. It's enough for me, Preston, how are we going to get off this ledge? Maybe you step off and fall the rest of the way, huh? <laughs> how far is it to the bottom? About 200 feet. Uh, is this all the rope that you have? Yes, Grant. It wouldn't go a quarter of the way. Well, we can't climb back up. No. Are we trapped on this ledge? Let me look around. Uh, Mr. Law, I have looked around. Uh -huh. I look over there. A few yards away, it is another ledge like this one. You see? Yes, I can see it. It seems to slant upward. Yeah, it does so. Right to the top of the canyon. Huh. We'd be all right if we could get to that ledge. Yeah. There is a connecting shelf. You see? It's less than four inches wide and slick with ice. What are we going to do? Just a minute, Grant. Look, your dog seems to know we're in trouble. King, get Hutton. Understand, boy? Hutton, on King! Hutton 
Holmes was a word that King knew. Combined with the familiar expression, on King, the big dog thought his master meant for him to leave the scene, to go on his way to Hutchins' trading boat. King wasn't sure. He moved back slowly, keeping his head turned toward the canyon's edge. He signaled his movement. Then he waited, listening. The sergeant didn't call him back. Instead, the commanding voice that rose from the canyon shouted, On King! Then King knew. He knew he was to leave his master, to go as quickly as possible to Hutchins' post. King understood. He's gone. A dog. Counting on a dog to go to the post and tell the trader that we're here. Ah. If that's the best that you can do, Preston... Father, please. I have confidence in King. Well, I haven't. Nor I. I suppose we're to sit and twiddle our thumbs while we freeze. Well, not freeze. We can pack this deep snow around us. Well, if we don't freeze, we'll starve. Dad, what... You keep quiet. King will bring help before we starve. King, King, King. In the name of heaven, don't depend on that dog. If, uh... They're so brave, Mr. Law climbed to the other ledge and took one end of the rope with him. He could fasten it and we could all cross to safety. I say it's worth the risk. No, no, it isn't. <laughs> uh, perhaps Mr. Law is afraid, huh? We're going to stay here until help comes. That's final. <laughs> The crystal-laden blast of snow drove hard against King as he raced toward the trading boat. Moisture froze around his eyes and nostrils. Snow clung to his furry coat. He ran on, struggling through the storm, fighting through deep drifts, calling on all his strength in the battle with the elements. Despite the dog's great efforts, progress was painfully slow. When the storm had spent itself, a great silence fell over the white wilderness. The silence that was broken only by the infrequent howl of a wolf. Uh, listen to those devils. Take it easy, Grant. Easy? Easy? How can I take it easy while we sit here on this ledge and wait for death? No one can find us here. We'll be found. Those wolves know we're going to die. They howl like that when death's at hand. King will bring help. Don't be a fool. It is no good to count on a dog. Time dragged on eleven minutes, each one of which added to Joe Grant's feeling of helplessness. His anger was slowly giving away to panic, and Jules Bazaar helped the transition. Uh, that dog, uh, he finds a place to fill his belly and sleep, and he forgets us. That'll do, Bazaar. He's right. Rosanna knows what he's talking about. Grant, King's no ordinary dog. Of course he is. The dog left us to find a place where we could fill his belly and go to sleep. I know dogs. Dad, please. You don't know King. Uh, save your sentimental slobber for someone else. These long nights get under your skin when you're trapped as we are, Grant. Don't let the strain get you. Don't preach. I'm not preaching. Well, then do something and get us out of here. If uh, you had courage cross to the other ledge. Of course you could. No, no, please You're don't You're supposed even... to be able to do anything. Grant. If I was your age, I'd do it myself. I'd walk along that narrow place, I'd get to the other ledge and go for help. You wouldn't go five feet, man, before you slipped and went down. <laughs> if you are afraid, Mr. Law, let me do it. You're safe in making that offer, Bazaar. You know I won't agree. If Bazaar can cross over there, you can do it. I can't do it. And neither can he. I am not afraid to try. Hey, you hear that? Father, don't listen to Jules Bazaar. <laughs> I thought that Mr. Law was afraid of nothing. Bazaar, you'd like to see me fall into that canyon, wouldn't you? It might mean escape for you when King brought help. Well, I'm not going to do it. I'm taking you in. Sergeant, why don't you let He's him go? He's got to stand trial before he dies. Father! Now, hold on. Now we'll see. Grant, give me that gun. Don't come any nearer. Oh, don't be a fool, man. Return my gun. I'll give the orders from now on. Grant, listen to me. Jules Bizarre is a killer. I know what he is. But if he can save us, he'll have the chance to do it. Go ahead, Bizarre. You can make the other ledge. Go to it. It will be better for me, Mr. Law, to try it first. Uh, he is more clever, huh? All right, Preston. No, no, get going. You. you slip into the canyon, Bazaar can try it. If he fails... 
I'll try it myself. At least we'll die making an effort to save ourselves. All right, Grant. We'll make an effort. Good. But we needn't die in that effort. I know a better plan. Don't let him stop. You shut up. I'll handle this. Grant, if our rope were four times as long, it would reach the floor of that canyon. What of it? We'll make it four times as long. How? By making it thinner. It'll take a long time, but we can do it. Unwind the rope and then braid the strands. Yes, we can do it. You three fix the rope. I'll keep the gun to make sure there are no tricks. Very well, Grant. I'll show you how to do it. Hard to work. Two hours, and you've only got three feet woven. Well, it took a long time to unravel the rope. It'll go faster from now on. Yeah, this is no good. Oh, shut up and keep working, Bazaar. Yeah, three hours. Things reach the post by now. Forget that dog and work on that rope. Better cover your hands again, Marie. Don't want them to freeze. been at it for four hours. Well, at least we're making headway, Grant. About 20 feet of rope. We're all right, man. We're not going to freeze, and we can surely finish the rope before the danger of starvation. Here, take your gun, Preston. I'll work on the rope with you. Good for you. Grant became interested in the weaving and braiding of the rope. He forgot his fears and forgot the passing of time. After six long hours, a thrilling sound fell upon the ears of Sergeant Preston. Grant, did you hear that? I didn't know wolves bark. That's no wolf, that's King. King! Hello, Anna! Anyone in No! Did you bring any rope? Back at Hutchins Trading Post, everyone relaxed around the huge stove. Jules was locked up safely in the local jail. Preston patted the head of his lead dog and looked at him proudly. You sure did it, King. He did. And if he could understand an apology, I'd make one. This rope you were braiding, did you think this would bear your weight? Why, no, I was sure it wouldn't. What's that? You were sure it wouldn't support us? It wouldn't bear our weight, Grant, but it did support our morale. That kept you from going to pieces. I... <laughs> well, Preston, this is the time I'm glad to have been fooled. You fooled me, and so did that dog, King. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios. Hal Neal speaking. This is the machine.